I regret letting my own ignorance drive him away from me. Listen, nobody is out here teaching parents how to accept their gay children. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 heartbreaking pose moments. Good no, you're not. No, you're not. It's Candy. She missed her last two shifts at the club. She hasn't come home yet. I am not a cross-dresser or a man. Excuse me? I, I am a woman. For this list, we're looking at the saddest moments from all three seasons of the show. Which of these moments had you tearing up? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The House of Evangelista's Explosive Fight Is there a future for a dancer? Mm. Yeah, if the dancer works hard and is talented. Oh, damn. So it'll be a short-lived career. Pose is all about the importance of chosen family in helping queer and trans people overcome serious adversity. So it's not easy to watch the members of Blanca's house viciously go at it in this pivotal season two episode. That's not a natural glow, sweetie. That's cocaine sweats. Frustrated by Blanca's ignorance of Angel's substance abuse, Damon rips into his mother as well as ballroom MC Pray Tell. That's You're being disrespectful, Damon. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Finally, Prey Tell's affair with the much younger Ricky comes to light, and he and Damon nearly come to blows. The fractured house reunites later in the season, but this no-holds-barred conflict marks a moment where the character's entire sense of community is in jeopardy. Number 9. Stan Bowes Breaks Up With Angel Evangelista One of Angel's main arcs in Season 1 is her tumultuous and clandestine relationship with Manhattan businessman Stan. I want to see your life. These ballrooms you're always talking about with the with the trophies and everything. I, I wanna I wanna see that. After the pair has overcome significant hurdles in their flawed relationship, Stan asks Angel to be his girlfriend and accompanies her to a ball. Seemingly unable to take in the whole experience, he dumps her the same night. I thought the secrecy was the thing holding us back, but Maybe it was what was keeping us together. It's obvious that Angel deserves much better throughout the course of the affair, and it's painful enough to see her treated as a secret. But her rejection after making numerous concessions for Stan is a particularly hard pill to swallow. I just wanted a taste of what you have. One moment of being true in my whole goddamn life. It's a rough patch in Angel's love life, but it clears the way for a far brighter future. Number 8. Blanca Evangelista's HIV Diagnosis So what does it say? Come on, don't keep me in suspense. Rip the band-aid off. Pose never shies away from the realities of the HIV-AIDS epidemic, and we're introduced to Blanca under these devastating circumstances. One of the future house mother's earliest scenes in the show finds her sitting in a clinic waiting room before receiving the life-changing news that she's HIV positive. Blanca, the tests confirm that you have HIV. Although Blanca doesn't say much, the camera focuses on the emotions flashing across her face as she processes her diagnosis. This gutting scene is a catalyst in Blanca's character arc, as it prompts her to leave Electra's house of abundance and start her own family. In just a few lines, it powerfully highlights the lack of support and recognition that trans women of color with HIV continue to face. Doesn't have to be a death sentence, isn't it though? Number 7. Costas Perez Says Goodbye to Pray Tell I'm never leaving this place, and you know that. And I only have so much time left. I don't like when you talk like this. Prey's boyfriend is a minor character in the show's first season, but his battle with AIDS illustrates the loss of loved ones that many in the LGBTQ community faced in the 80s and 90s. I need you to promise me. No doom and gloom tonight! Listen to me! During a visit from Prey, Costas delivers an emotional and brutally honest monologue about his impending death. When I move on, I want you to cry your ass off and scream to the Lord on high. <laughs> but only for one day. He instructs his lover to mourn, but also to move on and live life to the fullest. I want you to find love again. Promise me that you'll do that. It's a heart-wrenching conversation that a couple should never have to have, and it lends meaning to Praytel's later attempts at finding love that sometimes land him in hot water. <laughs> Number 6. Cubby Wintour's Death In a year, 
I don't know, baby. Maybe we should share some of our memories of him. Season 3 finds Blanca working as a nurse's aide at a New York City hospital, treating numerous patients with HIV AIDS. Tragically, one of her charges is ballroom upstart Cubby, a young voguer who had bounced from house to house throughout the series. After a tearful reunion with his mother, Cubby lies unresponsive in a bed as his loved ones keep vigil and tell stories about his better days. Cubby didn't care what anybody had to say about him. Never apologized for who he was. His mother expresses her regret and apologizes to him just before he passes away. I'm sorry I gave up on you. I'm sorry I let you go. Even for this unflinching show, it's a tragic moment, and it's made even more emotional by his friends and family's grief-stricken reactions. It's never easy to lose familiar characters, but this send-off beautifully pays tribute to Cubby. Number 5. Pray Tell is Stood Up by His Childhood Love When Prey visits his hometown in Season 3, it brings about a reunion with Vernon, his childhood love. Now a minister at Prey's childhood church, Vernon makes plans to leave his wife and children and join his former flame in New York. I should have gone with you. But when the bus arrives, Vernon is nowhere to be found. It's not exactly a shocking outcome, and it speaks to the courage and independence that Prey has demonstrated since childhood. Finally, in one of the show's most wistful and haunting moments, Prey imagines his and Vernon's younger selves standing outside the church. For its meditation on young love and the bravery it takes to pursue it, this bittersweet scene stands out as one of the show's best. Number 4. Damon is thrown out of his home. One and two and three and four and five. Even the pilot episode of Pose is not without its devastating moments. When we're introduced to Damon, he's a teenager who loves dance, but is forced to practice in secret. We talked about you blasting music. When his father confronts him with an adult magazine, it leads to a downright frightening confrontation. And I'm thinking, not my son, because we discussed it and I said, no dance class. I can explain. I yeah. was... How do you explain this? Damon's mother breaks up the violence, only to disown him on the front lawn, just as the family's patriarch did moments earlier. How could you betray me this way? It's undoubtedly one of the show's scariest sequences, and a shocking beginning to Damon's story. But the horrific scene serves a purpose by illustrating the all-too-common realities of LGBTQ plus youth facing violence in the home and being abandoned by their parents. But I'm not a sinner. You are! Number 3. Pray Tell's Sacrifice Comes to Light oh, Get up, Pray. Get up, Pray. No, 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 Pray, get up. Although it features Ricky discovering Pray Tell's body, the first part of the series finale reveals an even more poignant reality behind the MC's unexpected death. Prey and Blanca had fought to get into an experimental trial for treating AIDS, but Ricky shares at a family dinner that Prey had given him medication too. What is it? I'm on the same meds Prey been taking. All at once, the house of Evangelista realizes that Prey had given up his own health for Ricky's. He was giving me his own meds. As an elder in the ballroom scene, the wisecracking commentator always took care of his community, and this final act is a bittersweet testament to his character. With Ricky weeping in Blanca's arms, the moment marks a somber conclusion to the episode and a touching tribute to an iconic TV figure. Number 2. Electra Abundance's Mother Kicks Her Out In Season 3, Electra's backstory is dramatically revealed in a flashback episode. I can't go back to my mother's house looking like this! Chill out, okay? It is 5 o'clock in the morning, your mother waiting up for you. You don't know, Miss Tasha Jackson! When coming home from working the piers, Electra attempts to sneak up to a room in a gown and wig. Dwayne, what are you wearing, boy? Her mother attacks her physically and verbally, forcing Electra to run away with almost nothing. Look at yourself! Look! With Electra smearing on lipstick as an act of defiance, it's a scene that mixes sadness and triumph. This is who I am. Farewell, 
mother dear. It isn't the first instance in the show of a character having to leave home because of their identity, but that doesn't make it any less tragic. It demonstrates that despite their differences and conflicts, the elders and ingenues of the ballroom scene have come together for a reason. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Ricky Wintour's HIV Diagnosis The show's exploration of the HIV-AIDS epidemic touches yet another character. It says here that the test came back positive. Do you have a general practitioner or will you be needing a recommendation for a doctor? Wait, what? We'll also need a list of all your sexual partners with their phone numbers so that we can contact Hold on, you. um, what are you saying? You are HIV positive. Pray Tell begs Ricky Wintour not to leave him. Addiction and abandonment collide in this painful scene. Well, who's gonna love you like I do, <laughs> huh? Nobody. You ain't got no education, you ain't got no job, no money, no home, no skills. And worst of all, you are positive. That's why your ass came to me. Don't nobody want us. Blanca Evangelista's nail salon is burned down. Frederica's cruelty towards her tenant knows no bounds. Hello, ma'am. Sorry. You said there was acetone and isopropyl alcohol on the premises. You are aware that those substances are highly flammable. The kind of stuff that could blow a place up. Yeah, of course, but this was a nail salon. Those kinds of chemicals are needed for my business. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Candy Ferocity's Funeral Candy's not coming home. Before her tragic off-screen death, Candy is one of the most misunderstood figures in the ballroom community. The episode devoted to her passing serves as a stirring farewell, and no moment is as emotional as her funeral. Taken too soon. Sister. After guests Lulu and Angel approach the casket, a vision of Candy appears to share words of wisdom, forgiveness, and encouragement. Time's gonna heal us in a way it never could if I was still alive. Most moving, though, is Candy's reunion with her estranged parents. You know, the outside is different, but beneath it, all I see is my baby. With characters granted one last chance to speak their minds to their beloved friend and daughter, the grief and longing in this scene are palpable. All of them boy things just wasn't your way. But you had guts. Pose has no shortage of difficult moments, but this tribute to the relationships Candy left behind had us welling up like no other. To Candy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.